This is Art Television. Coming up, State of Business, sponsored by Star Star Seattle, IWS Aviation. Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Chavka Samra Singha. Let's have a look at the headlines. Paris Club communicates financing assurances. Merchandise exports earnings. Experiences drop in December. News in detail. Deputy Ambassador of Japan, Kotaro Katsuki, notes that Paris Club members have reached an agreement and are to communicate their financing assurances in the next few days. The Deputy Ambassador did so while speaking at the International Chamber of Commerce Sri Lanka webinar on funding options for Sri Lanka. Last September, you know, on September 1st, the Sri Lankan government came to an agreement with the IMF staff on a assistance package uh, of uh, 2.9 billion US dollars in the coming uh, 48 months. And so that is there. But then to unlock that money, uh, the IMF board uh, needs to approve uh, that package. And there's a prerequisite uh, for that to happen. And that condition is that uh, among, you know, there's a uh, work with commercial creditors, uh, you need uh, good faith. Uh, and that means you have, you, you need to be negotiating. And that is happening. And then also for like uh, uh, government creditors, uh, there's a, a, what is called a financing assurance, which is necessary uh, for the IMF board to consider approval of that uh, package. And uh, in fact, uh, there has been a concrete movement uh, in this regard. Uh, just uh, recently, this uh, past uh, week or so, uh, India has issued uh, that uh, financing assurance. And also, uh, earlier this week, the Paris Club, uh, which is basically uh, the group uh, of uh, developed countries, and uh, we discuss about uh, you know, debt and, and uh, development assistance uh, collectively. In a meeting uh, earlier this week, uh, Paris Club also agreed in principle that we will issue uh, our financing assurance uh, well, uh, within days. So that's uh, just about to happen. So uh, these things uh, hopefully will lead to uh, the IMF uh, considering uh, to have the board convene and then to uh, approve uh, uh, this package. The Sri Lanka Export Development Board reports that earnings for merchandise exports in December 2022 decreased 9.7% year on year. Sri Lanka Customs data shows that Sri Lanka earned 1044 million US dollars in December 2022 through merchandise exports. This was mainly due to the decrease in exports earnings from apparel and textiles, tea, rubber-based products, coconut-based products, food and beverages, spices and essential oil, and fisheries products. The reason for this decline was due to the ongoing recession in major markets due to the rising cost of production and energy. Imports declined sharply due to inflation and demand for goods and services are reduced. Major product sectors except electrical and electronic components and diamond gems and jewellery recorded declines in December 2022. Year on year, in December 2022, Exports of apparel and textiles decreased 9.56% to 480.28 million US dollars. The decrease was driven by both apparel and textiles. Export earnings from tea, which made up 11% of merchandise exports, decreased 3.01% to 107.29 million US dollars. This was mainly due to the lower export of both bulk and packet tea. Export earnings from rubber and rubber finished products decreased 20.34% to 74.47 million US dollars. With poor performance in exports of pneumatic and retreated rubber tires and tubes. All three subsectors categorized under coconut based products, kernel, fiber, and shell products decreased 19.12, 21.14, and 24.53% respectively. Spices and essential oil earnings decreased 28.5%. To 31.39 million US dollars due to the poor performance in export of cinnamon and pepper. The Export Development Board report on export performance in December 2022 further states that year on year earnings from seafood declined 20.01% to 21.31 million US dollars. Except lobster and crabs, export earnings from frozen fish, 
fresh fish, shrimp and other edible fish declined 22.8, 27.6, 43.24 and 0.47% respectively. Meanwhile, export earnings from ornamental fish also declined 2.9% to 2.13 million US dollars. However, export earnings from electrical and electronics components increased 16.18% to 42.94 million US dollars with strong performance in exports of insulated wires and cables and other electrical and electronic products. Except Italy, the Netherlands, the United Arab Emirates, Japan and Bangladesh, other countries which are considered as top 15 markets recorded declines during the month. Exports of free trade agreement partners, which constituted 7.2% of Sri Lanka's total merchandise exports, declined 19.63% to 71.7 million US dollars. Exports of India declined 28% to 64.97 million US dollars, and Pakistan dropped by 25.4% to 6.73 million US dollars. On a region wise comparison, exports to all regions except the Middle East and ASEAN recorded negative growth rates. The estimated value of services exports for the year 2022 was 1,876.3 million US dollars, decreasing 5.9% over the corresponding period of 2021. The services exports estimated by the Export Development Board consist of ICT BPM, construction, financial services and transport and logistics. Stay tuned, we will return after this commercial break. IWS Aviation. Welcome back. The apparel industry has ended 2022 with a 22% growth in exports to 5.9 billion US dollars over 2021. However, the year-on-year -year performance growth dip in the last quarter has reinforced its struggle. The 2022 exports figure points to the apparel industry doing better than the pre-COVID performance, but exports value in the last quarter of 2022 is lower comparatively. Industry analysts point out that though growth is a high 22% between 2021 and 2022, in comparison to 2019, the improvement is only 5.3%. Thanks to impressive performance in the earlier part of the year, exports overtook the 2019 figure within 11 months of 2022. However, in the fourth quarter, though month-on-month -month exports have improved between October and December 2022, it is far below the peak performance of over 500 million US dollars between June and August. One reason for the year-on-year -year dip in the last three months of 2022 is higher inventories both at store levels and with consumers. Rising inflation in key markets is another factor. Due to these factors, industry analysts said Sri Lanka's apparel exports could continue to be lower on a year-on-year -year basis until the first half of 2023. In the short to medium term, if exports are to increase, access to new markets and greater access to emerging and high potential markets is key. In this regard, early finalization of proposed free trade agreements by the Ranil Vikramasinghe government is paramount, according to industry analysts. Sri Lankan manufacturers and exporters keeping their costs down is another key factor. For this, the country's macroeconomic fundamentals, indicators and the ease of doing business need to improve. Indian fabric is gaining ground in the Sri Lankan textile market as imports from India are increasing compared to Chinese supplies. Sri Lanka's fabric imports from India are witnessing an upward trend as they jumped more than 50% in four years. But its imports from China remained almost stable during the same period. Sri Lanka's fabric imports from India increased to 565.848 million US dollars from 2021 from 374.214 million US dollars in 2017 according to Fiber to Fashion's market insight tool Texpro. The inbound shipment had amounted to 426.046 million US dollars in 2018 and 485.16 million US dollars in 2019 before declining to 
2021 million US dollars in 2020 due to the pandemic. However, it bounced back to 565.848 million US dollars in 2021. Sri Lanka imported fabric worth 556.921 million US dollars from January to November 2022. The total imports for 2022 are likely to surpass the shipment of 2021. Fabric imports from China to Sri Lanka were recorded at 888.772 million US dollars in 2017, which inched up to 897.101 million US dollars in 2021 the shipment increased by just 1% in 4 years the imports amounted to 892.74 million US dollars in 2018 and 944.202 million US dollars in 2019 it came down to 720.823 million US dollars in 2020 but increased to 897.101 million US dollars in 2021 Sri Lanka's fabric imports totaled 2.141 billion US dollars in the first 11 months of 2022. China and India were the top suppliers with a total contribution of more than 64%. The imports from China secured a share of 38.73%, while India's share was 26.01% of the total. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka yesterday confirmed that the Water Management Secretariat has agreed to release reservoir water. This reservoir water will be used to generate hydropower for the next couple of days. PUCSL Chairman Janaka Ratnayaka said the commission will reach a decision by Wednesday the 1st of February in relation to power cuts for the remainder of the 2022 GCE advanced level examination. The regulator is of the view that power cuts should not be imposed and has refused to approve requests for power disruptions by the Ceylon Electricity Board. However, the CEB has continuously enforced power cuts since the beginning of the exams, notwithstanding the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka's directive to prevent the disruption of power cuts. The Human Rights Commission has filed a contempt of court case before the Supreme Court citing the Power and Energy Ministry Secretary, Ceylon Executive Board Chairman, and the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation Managing Director and Chairman as respondents. The Human Rights Commission said that the respondents failed to abide by the settlement arrived before the commission with regard to the continuous supply of power during the period pertaining to the 2022 advanced level examination. The commission alleges that notwithstanding the settlement reached by these parties to provide uninterrupted electricity for A-level students during the period of the examination, the Ceylon Electricity Board willfully and maliciously disregarded the settlement and continued with the power cuts. The Human Rights Commission statement noted the settlement was to prevent power cuts only during the period of the A-level examination. The commission added that it treats this disregard of the Ceylon Electricity Board to provide an uninterrupted electricity supply during the examination period as a gross violation of a child's right to education. Stay tuned for the stock update. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on negative notes today. The All Share Price Index dropped 24.64 points to close at 8,865.05, and the S&P SL20 dropped 17.74 points to close at 2,764.51. The turnover was 1.7 billion rupees, and over 77 million shares were traded. Up next are forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night. State of Business was sponsored by Star Star Sierra.